All right, so um, I'm Tyler, uh, and uh, my capstone project was the creation of a high school strength conditioning class. Oh, well, I wanted to call it the fundamentals of strength conditioning. So basically, what we did is I had to create a three semester or semester course, so three credit hours. It was targeted towards juniors and seniors, and hopefully they had a prerequisite of anatomy. Uh, people who should take the class um, would be kids or students that are interested in exercise science, strength conditioning, physical therapy, athletic training. We actually have a good athletic training program in our district currently, so this could be a nice um, expansion on that. Goals of the class, educate them on training, uh, get them ready for when they leave high school on proper training programs, variables, and guidelines. Expose them to research, um, look at different fields related to strength conditioning, and then help develop skills they can actually use in the strength conditioning field. Uh, we used, I used two main textbooks here um, for the class, which were both part of our concentration, which is the essential strength conditioning and periodization, the theory and method, methodology of training by uh, Bompa and uh, Buccinelli. Uh, but what uh, I did was I took the main concepts from these books and broke them into the essentials I thought high school students need to know um, for this 18 week semester course. The Essentials of Strength Conditioning is the textbook uh, you need to study for the year um, CSCS, the Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist exam. So I figured that was the best place to start. Of course, it broke down into six units, uh, everything from bioenergetics and biomechanics to program design, the programming principles, the variables, um, how to set up an actual training session from the warm up to the lifting to conditioning at the end, all those things that a strength conditioning coach needs to know. And I think any athlete that is looking to, or a student that is looking to get into strength conditioning or even physical therapy, athletic training needs to know. The next one was periodization. Uh, I just like to think of that it has long term training. A lot of high school kids don't look at the long term goals, they look at two hours, two days. Um, for now, they need to look at the long-term uh, development and how they can get better and build programs. Uh, additional variables, things like age, sex, and nutrition, trying to get a little bit of that in there because they're very important in the uh, training of um, individuals. And finally, I want to really focus on the role of rehab because uh, it's very important that we can help keep athletes on the field and students healthy um, by understanding how issues actually do heal and then how we can properly communicate with our um, sports medicine team, athletic trainer, whoever is involved, physical therapist, doctor in your current role in order to make things as easy for return, return to sport as possible. So we do have some general basic assessments. I have some traditional tests and quizzes throughout the course, um, usually a, a test for anything that's over, we spend more than a week on, a quiz for anything we spend over did spend less than a week on. And I do have some um, projects I thought were pretty neat that I wanted to incorpor incorporate into the, per, uh, into the course. Uh, the first one's a performance model analysis. And this is where the students will actually break down the sport based on the energy needs, the movements they see, the types of um, sprints they see. Uh, they will look at what's the race ratio, the work to rest ratio. So. For example, football, it's it usually work for four to six seconds at a high intensity of 90% or above. And then the rest is anywhere between 45 seconds to a minute and a half, depending on what level you're looking at, high school to college. But looking at those things, can you break down the actual sport? Because you need to do that in order to train the athlete correctly. Then a needs analysis. Uh, what sport are they in? That's where the performance model comes in. Um, to play and then where is the current where's what's the state that current uh, athlete is currently at and how can we develop them and meet the needs and weaknesses strengths and weaknesses that they have then we wanted to actually build a training cycle so we did an eight-week mesocycle cycle um, where we get to incorporate the principles we learned in unit number three and then also i wanted to incorporate uh, a skill uh, and that's the use of google sheets in the creation of making programs so how can you use uh Google Sheets to create programs. So a lot of stuff you can do on YouTube with kids and their short videos that, that were, that's a skill that some people are looking for. Um, annual plan, uh, again, long-term goals. They're gonna use, again, how can you take those training principles for short training 
mesocycles and microcycles and how can we build them into the whole annual plan of a year training. Um, and then again, how can you use Google Sheets to help make you that so you're organized and keep it there. I also wanna give exposure to fields um, by bringing in different strength coaches um, from different sports. So example, I uh, have some high school strength coach connections, bring them in, talk today, how do they periodize for tr say track and field? Then a college coach, I have the connection with division one football strength conditioning coach. How do you periodize for division one football? Weightlifting, how do you periodize for a weightlifting as pure strength athlete <clears throat> based on uh, power movements? Powerlifting, how do you periodize for powerlifting? Because these are all things that students like. They might just be a high school athlete. You're not going to play any more sports. How does someone else do it? A college athlete, if they want to go to college, what can they expect? They're, they want to go into Olympic weightlifting. They want to go into powerlifting. I want to expose them to all these different strength areas and what they do. Other areas is I would like to have a dietitian talk, talk um, and then a physical therapist and athletic trainer, and hopefully actually take a tour and see what some of these people do on a day-to-day -day basis. I want to expose them to more literature. I want to do article review sessions where we read and discuss the article. And I think um, that's something all high schoolers need because I know I wasn't as prepared to read actual research when I went to college as I needed to be. Um, what did I learn? I learned that uh, I need to make sure I'm preparing for the future. Um, that this helped me a lot because I view teaching as learning because if you want to teach something, you really have to know what you're talking about because the kids will see right through you if you don't. So I think this really prepared me for the Certified Strength Conditioning Specialist exam, the CSCS by the National Strength Coach Association. It's really going to help me. Hopefully, I'll, I want to be really strong in these areas that I chose to take out. Um, it also gave me some life lessons. Uh, strength conditioning is a lifelong learning thing, right? The field's rapidly changing with science and technology. And I need to make sure I understand the fundamentals and how I can apply these fundamentals with this new science and technology coming out. And then uh, I need to learn to better time manage. Uh, a lot of the family time, job and training, um, had to cut some of it out, lost some of it. I, I just, I didn't do a better job. I could have done better. I didn't. How do I apply this in the future? I have a class next year, which is more lab based, um, but I'm hoping it can take the snippets of this, especially in the programming unit in the, um, uh, bioenergetics unit and teach the kids in nutrition, teach the kids um, and students, my athletes, why did we program this? Why do I take this role in it? And then I'm hoping to make a coach's manual in the future so I can hand it to my sporting coaches and show, hey, this is what strength and instincts think the warm-up should be. Um, this is how they do it. This is what best practices are for them. So they have something short they can look at and hopefully help them and help build buy-in as well. The hurdles I face is definitely time. We're all busy, right? Um, I had unforeseen issues, saved over four hours worth of work one night. That was fun. Motivation, so not always there. Organization information, does it flow well? I don't think the textbook flows very well with the essentials of strength and conditioning. So I rearranged some stuff. Um, I had trouble finding hooks, things to get kids excited at the beginning of the class. Um, and the amount of information, there's a whole lot of information in that textbook. How did I, it was hard to get through, like, what do I really need the kids to hit in this high school level class? And then how do I, how can I get more practical application of the information in there? And then again, love to do more. So I'm looking, hopefully this can lead to possibly more or, or, or any, maybe even a different class in the future, maybe a, a more in-depth one. Um, thanks for your time. Here's my references, our two books. I hope everybody's finishing up. Have a good week.